for the job in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires never and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. First commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given thine only Son, to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an ensample of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit and also daily endeavour ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. portion of scripture appointed for the epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the 34th verse. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thudas, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who were slain and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up, Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxi, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. 
And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the sixth chapter of that according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennyworth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and to the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain, himself alone. Praise be to thee, O Christ, for this, thy holy gospel. When Jesus perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. There is no obvious link between Friday being a fast day and the fact that on Fridays we celebrate the light of the Book of Common Prayer and the fact that the camera went belly up at the epistle. An epistle in which the advice of Gamaliel, Gamaliel will feature in our thoughts about today's Gospel. At the end of the feeding of the 5,000, the crowd were quite clearly overwhelmed with admiration and wonder and excitement. They had a particular view of the Messiah and reckoned that they could fit Jesus into it. And they had that view partly because of the religious writing and teaching, largely of the time, but also looking at certain parts of the Old Testament from earlier times as well. A Messiah who would conquer Israel's enemies and establish the rule of Israel's king, the Lord Jehovah. And they had that view as well, because that was the sort of Messiah which they wanted and reckoned that they needed. Israel was, after all, a country under occupation. Taxes were high, and their understanding of their national identity was inextricably bound up with their understanding of their religious identity, which made Israel a melting pot about to explode. 
And that theme of seeking the God whom we want is not something confined to ancient Israel or to that particular crowd. The disciples did it when Jesus was proposing to go to Jerusalem, to Judea after Lazarus' death and counseled very strongly against it, despite the fact that his mind was set on it. St. Peter did it when he wouldn't accept the prediction of the Passion, this must not happen to you, Lord. Get behind me, Satan. And St. Peter did it again when he didn't want Jesus to wash his feet. It wasn't appropriate. And we do it as well. Every time we succumb to the temptation to ask God to see with our perspective and not his, and to do the things that we think he really ought to be doing, whether for the salvation of the world or the safety of the world. But of course, all prayer needs to start with the acceptance that God knows best. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And when we don't start our prayer in that way, there is a sense in which Jesus withdraws the sense that he is unable, effectively, to use us. He can't use those who know better than he does. And Gamaliel's words, if it's of God, it will last, but if it's of man, it won't pretty much sum up that perspective. But it's not Gamaliel who has the right words. It is in fact Our Lady. Let it be to me according to your word. To him. With the Father and the Holy Spirit be praise and glory forever and ever. Amen. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Praying on this commemoration of St. Melitus for the Diocese of London, for its bishops, clergy and people. Praying with others in our communion for the South Sudanese Diocese of Morobo and the Diocese of Worcester. James and John, the bishops, for the clergy and people. Praying in our own diocese for Martin, our bishop, and for the parish of Heathfield, for Father Mitch Mitchell, and all who worship in that place. As we pray for peace in the world, Continue to pray for those who seek to bring and to keep it, and among them for the forces of the Crown at this time on active service. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations. And to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. 
and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness and peace, and so to direct all kings and rulers that under them thy people may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace. And especially we pray today in our parish partnership with the parish of St. Richard's for Father Timothy and his people, as also in this parish on their birthdays for Sylvia Slater and David Jeffries. That with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Especially among them, those persecuted for the faith, those infected and affected in the present pandemic, as also Sheila Irving, Mary Sabapathy, Margie Fisher, Katie Christensen, Christina Wilkinson, Richard Parr, Lindsay Murray, Dorothy Barnett, and John Rylands. We hold before thee today Angel Scott and Marian Humberwood, those named on our prayer cross and born on our own hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Among them those who have died in this pandemic, as also Catherine Donson, Betty Field, Josephine Williams, Joanna House, Peter Gent, and Robert Eldridge. Beseeching me to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with St. Mary the Virgin, St. George the Great Martyr, and all thy saints, we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, 
and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St Paul said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Here also what St John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts to give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, 